Hey everybody, welcome back to Catechumens Depart. As usual, this is Eric Anderson, recording remotely. Father Mark. And Father Mark Kozak from Holy Assumption Church in South Philadelphia, recording remotely. I know, you're actually in the great state of Delaware again. What is that? Is that, is that we're remote? We are remote. I'm still in the great state of Delaware, yes I am. And I am in the... But I went to Philly yesterday, so it can't... Okay, I'm going Friday, so I still have nominal residency. My mailing address is still there. I'm in Marshfield, Missouri. Nobody knows where that is. Well, I see. So. Which is like okay with me right now. <laughs> we're going to we're going to find out though. You're all welcome to visit. We have guys in black. I know my nephew keeps giving me a bad time. He's like, "Why do you wear all black?" I'm like, "Well, I don't like doing laundry." <laughs> I hang out with priests. Just say I, I like Johnny Cash. That's just what I told him. I was like, dude, have you ever listened to Johnny Cash or seen The Matrix? Ah, uh, anyway, enough of our bantering, I guess. These people are like, what? Well, you guys are crazy. But you still keep watching, and we're happy to be with you, as always. I'm sorry about my funky camera yes. angle. I can't figure out anything to do about it, so we just have to have a funky camera angle. Um... Should, Last we, time. should we talk about uh, that we're going to continue this while, while, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we're going to keep doing this. Yeah, we are. Unless it, I mean, yeah. We're unless like, they stop our internet, unless we get totally censored. I don't think we're that controversial. We're not. I don't know. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. No, no one's going to. I mean, someone's going to censor us because we talked about hope and suffering. <laughs> You never know. I'm getting my protest sign out. Wait, I've got some cardboard. Quick, a cardboard and a Sharpie. We're good. All right, I protest. Grab your brick and we're good to go. Which we have plenty of in South Philly. We have bricks aplenty. We have lots of bricks. Yes, we do. Yeah. So, yeah, let's. we'll keep going. Um, as long as the internet and our, hey. our seven viewers will still have us, we will keep recording. Um for you guys, Kim and I are out here for the time being. Uh, we just need a little bit more peaceful environment. Uh, we'll be back to visit. We're actually coming back this weekend. So if you're at church, we'll see you. Hello. We miss seeing you in person, but my family's out here. So it seems like a good time to take a breather and, and hang out here for a bit. But Father Mark and I will continue to be with you doing this through the wonders of the interwebs. Through Zoom. Wow. Zoom owns half the internet now, I think. Zoom me. Uh, I guess. So, last time our uncensorable topic was hope, and I got some good feedback on that. People really liked that show. Um, really? They wow. did. So, we're going to really make them like us this week. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about suffering. Everybody just tunes out. It, it's silent anyway, but... Um, <laughs> Cricket to see. <laughs> Suffering. Oh, I mean, well, they did just lock down all of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania again. So, and we're entering the nativity fast. And uh, like, why do we want to talk about suffering? Um, we are not talking about theodicy, which is the question of why does a good God prevent, uh, allow for bad things to happen or suffering in the world? We're other people have talked about that for like a million years and we're not talking about that today, just to clarify. Um, I'm curious, we sort of started to touch on this a little bit at the end of the last show. So I noodled on this a bit this week. Like what, what does, uh, what does suffering have to do with our salvific journey? And I have some things I want to talk about, but, Firstly, I want to talk about, Father Mark, I want you to talk about um, why do we voluntarily take on a lot of suffering and what does involuntary suffering sort of, how do those things play together in the example that we're given by Christ? Um, let's start right now, like we've just entered the, uh, the nativity fast and gosh, we just fast like all the time in the Orthodox church, right? We're always like not eating um, this or that, uh, which is a, a, a mini suffering, right? Like, why do we do that? 
Well, that's more of a, I, I like to use discipline. I mean, some mm. people use it as a suffering thing because they can't go to Burger King and, you know, and so forth. And, and, you know, Burger King now has the ultimate burger. So let's, you know, let's, let's get up to the 2020 and, you know, we can do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, which is purely <laughs> Lenten, and, and it's quite good, you know, according to one priest and one subdeacon that I know. Yeah. Oh. Um, I think a lot of our, I think our problems with suffering has to do uh, once again with our our cultural definitions of what that what the word means. So a lot of us go into Advent and say, oh, we're going to suffer, so we'll be better and, and worthy to um, celebrate the nativity of our, of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ on the 25th of December. It makes us worthy somehow, so we're more worthy because we suffer more. Mm -hmm. We're more worthy because we have more guilt, because guilt is a, is a sort of a, a second cousin once removed from suffering. Right. Um, we're more worthy if we if we you know uh, keep our heads down and don't look at other people, and um, uh, you know it makes us more humble, you know. And it's always sort of better like to be Pharisee. more humble. Yeah. 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 So what we need to get out of our heads is is that none of these things makes makes us more worthy. You know, we can't compare what Christ did for us on the cross, descending into hell and rising from the dead to anything that we can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no like, you know, it's not even apples and oranges. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, so. Now, does that mean that we go out like. The, the truly crazy hedonists of our own society and every other society that's ever existed in, in, in humankind and become hedonists because uh, uh, Christ just saves, saved us all and it's really okay to be that crazy? No, no. Uh, and what the church has done with the Holy Spirit and, and the Gospels and um, part of what comes out of the Old Testament, and we have to be very careful with the Old Testament on this because... Um, there was there was a lot of things going on there and a lot of things were directed towards uh you know uh the chosen people mm -hmm. you know and we are the new israel the the church is the new israel we're, we're the new chosen people right now, do we inherit all of that no um, we don't inherit all that so we don't go for an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth we don't look at suffering the same way as the as the um uh, hebrews did um uh so we're not going to extend, ex God will not be extending sufferings from generation to generation because of what your great third great grandfather did. You know, he was a bad guy and, um, uh, you know, so you're going to suffer because of that. Sometimes uh, those in are my all, family that's all it feels false. that way. Yeah, well, in many families it feels that way. Uh, but those are all false. Right. Because they, they don't have anything to do with God. Right. Uh, they have to do with the fallen world. And this is what we need to plug ourselves into and remember what's going on here. We have to live here. We have to swim through this sewage sometimes of, of, the, of the modern world, uh -huh. of the fallen world. But that doesn't mean that God put it there for us to suffer. Okay, so this is what I wanted to get at to make sure that people understood this. Why um, do you? Oh, go ahead. So, some people like to fast. I'm one of those people. I like to fast. I really do. Um, I like to go to lots of services. I wish we had more services for during Advent. Yeah. Um, uh, I like how the church prepares itself for great feasts mm. and how we're preparing ourselves for the nativity of our Lord. Um, now, I don't believe in, of course, you know, uh, the whipping board or, or, you know, the hair shirt or, or wearing chains or anything like that. Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, well, I was going to ask about that, right? Like what, like, 
what's the deal with like monastics? And I know obviously Catholicism and Orthodoxy that people have had different approaches during the, and a lot of times what we think of in the West is, you know, flagellants or whatever, which is right. uh, not Orthodox. But I mean, even within <clears throat> our tradition, there's some pretty extreme uh, examples of people seeking out uh, great difficulty uh, in yeah. order to, to further their repentance, to further their uh, about face, mm. uh, which we talked about last time, their orient to 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 write their orientation, um, and and so how do we understand that? I guess that mm, what sometimes can look like really uh, almost masochistic. Um, I'm I'm not coming up with a specific example, but I feel like every time I read like Lives of the Saints in our well, reading, there's hair shirts, there's the rock crushing thing. There's, right. uh, there's star. I mean, there's. These guys don't eat, right? You know, like just never. And if they do eat, they eat like once a month. You know, it's yeah. like, and you sort of go, well, how can someone do that? Well, someone can do that if they. It, it's physically possible. Yeah. For about three or four weeks to do that, you mm -hmm. know, and. Um. But you usually i'm not going to use the word normally here because that's that that doesn't apply usually in these cases we're talking about people who are hermits and who are under direct supervision of a spiritual father or spiritual mother and they're not out there you know being, being a loony or something mm -hmm. you know they're they're doing this specifically to turn themselves around, as you said, to hit the mark, mm -hmm. to, um, uh, to repent. And I don't think it, that everybody should be doing that. I, mm -hmm. I just don't, you know, I don't, um, should some people be doing that under supervision, under the correct, um, uh, correct prayer, prayer life. And, um, yeah maybe yeah the problem is is that we need more hermits we need more monks we meet need more nuns we need we we need more monastics to to be in the mix here <laughs> yeah you know yeah. and so we can go to them and say well let's talk about suffering yeah yeah and they'll talk about suffering for like six or seven hours you know um or they'll write a book on suffering you know um if we get our nun talking about it she will definitely go on for six or seven hours well yeah she'll go on for you know because it just her own personal suffering you you look at, at her i mean mother catherine has been through extraordinary things and i look at other people too you know i i, I spent three years as a hospice chaplain and i watch people suffer and and um and of course family members suffer too and it's interesting, the people that were suffering and, and eventually uh, fell asleep in the Lord were, they would understand that usually more than uh, the family member would. Yeah. And this is in our antiseptic, uh, you know, um, commercial death society that we live in. Yeah. Um, because we can't talk about death, we can't talk about suffering, we can't talk about any of these things. No, because they, they basically don't exist except in uh, video games and in war that we don't have really any connection with because it's mechanized does, and far away. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's all IT stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, all they need to do is just go to um, the right veterans hospital or the right uh, medical hospital and I can certainly show you. Yeah, what the real of the war is, you know, and um, uh, so those people, the PR veterans, since this is a veteran, almost veteran week, suffered yeah. for our sake. Yeah, um, they they honor the flag because the flag represents all of us, mm -hmm. uh, not any one particular person, but all of us. Um, 
So when they go out and defend our, defend our country, that's a suffering for our, con- for our country's sake. Yes, for their fellow, for their, the guys and gals that are part of their unit, that's true, but also for our country. It's just, uh, when it's, we, go, go ahead, I'm sorry. It seems to me that the value of suffering, suffering, no, the suffering that has value is, is directed um, at self-emptying. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, well, I'll borrow a, a symbolic uh, image that I, I got from, probably from Jonathan Peugeot, I think. Um, but he talked about the, uh, the idea, you know, the mountain is always the holy place, right? Where, where one meets God, be it Sinai or Olympus or whatever. But if you think of the pagan religions, right? At the top of the mountain is Olympus, which is the mountain of the gods where everyone is blissful and hedonistic and whatever and the gods are cavorting and doing their thing but in christianity at the ultimate top of the mountain is first sinai but then ultimately it's the cross is at the top of our holy mountain and the cross is god becoming a human being and and emptying himself all all the way and it seems like, you know, you're using the example of, of soldiers and it's like, that's a, an echo of that. And so it seems to me like suffering that is valuable is always some kind of echo of that. Is that fair? Yeah, it echoes the cross. I think that's a, that's a very good way of, of, of expressing it. Um, I think that for most of us, we fall into one of the, the, the suffering traps, uh, the misdefinition traps in our culture so and and the biggest one is guilt i have uh personally and and i don't know where i read this but uh god doesn't pull guilt trips on us Uh -uh. since jesus became god and man i mean guilt is not in god's toolbox yeah this is not a part of our lives is guilt is uh you know so we need to work through that you know, that whole idea that, gee, we don't need to feel guilty about something because God has forgiven us. We're working on repentance. There's been some suffering there that might have taught us something about this. Um, and we go on. Yeah, instead of perhaps another kind of useful suffering might be the suffering that lets you know, like, it's like an electric fence, which I can see out the window here. If I had a better camera, I could turn it for you guys. But there's like an electric fence, right? And then and when the cow hits that, it's like, stop. Don't go there. Well, I hit one one. Uh, when I was scuba diving, when I was learning how to scuba dive, when I was being certified how to scuba dive, I put a, a long piece of gra- wet grass on an electric fence. <laughs> you know what that does? <laughs> Of course, I was only 16, so give me a break, all right? Okay, right, good. But, uh, yeah. Good. But <laughs> So, yes, it will. <laughs> that was suffering that let you know, don't do that again. Don't do that. Don't do that again. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there is, there is learning suffering. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, and a lot of people think that, that that's where God puts these walls up in front of these sort of test pattern things and... Let's go to test, you know, God sitting up there and with the archangels. Saying, Let's go to test number 145B. And, and it's like we'll the get, mouse maze. <laughs> we'll, get Jake, we'll get Jake up here on that. And it, that's not how it works. You know, it's right. just not, uh-uh. <laughs> you know? Do you, would you? You know, would you do we have that? to live through it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would be tempted myself to pin that on at least part of that on uh, poor or, or I, I don't like uh, penal substitution as a, as an atonement idea. And, and because it is laden with so much guilt and, and because that's so prominent in Western theology, 
do you think because our culture is so shaped by Western theology, implicitly at least, do you think that maybe that's where a lot of that guilt comes off, comes from? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, and, and I'm not blaming, you know, everybody in Western yeah. culture, you know, and they're not all bad. No. Um, it's, that's the soup. That's our, that's our water. Yeah. But that's our, that's our soup. And now, of course, we have a different flavored soup with some of the same ingredients because we still live in the, in, in the West. Mm -hmm. Um, that's anti-Christian and anti, um, everything but still has some of still has some of the ingredients there yeah uh, uh, but well that's what i mean all of the 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 great anti-theistic modernist machine mind things marxism being the primary one that we are familiar with but all things sort of devolve to that right it still holds to christian norms without God, but then it becomes tyrannical because you can't be forgiven. Yeah, and and there's no personhood, which is what, of course, was the ultimate downfall of the Soviet Union and and its satellites. Mm -hmm. um, there's all also no nationhood in the good sense of nationhood. Right. I'm reading a book right now that's um, it's a little weird. It's about the, uh, I thought it was a, a history book about the Arctic people um, in, um, in the Russian empire and uh, the Soviet Union. And uh, it's more of a, it's that, but it's something more. They're, they got into this sort of the nitty gritty of, of, of what happened um, when the Russians first came to Siberia. And then um, uh, right now, I, w w the Civil War is just over, uh, just in the book where, I, where I'm at right now. And what they're arguing about is nationality. Mm -hmm. So are these people nationalities? Are they cultures? Are they people? Are they uh, linguistically a people, you know, and so on and so forth. And that's what determines for the Soviets whether they they're a part of the soviet union or not and um which makes it very interesting because in the west that's not necessarily what that means that's not that's not the definite definition of uh, nationality uh -huh. per se but um i could go way off on that, that on that rabbit trail. Yeah, and but, I can go, like, I can go, con considering that Stalin was the head of nationalities in, in uh, Lenin's Soviet yeah. Union. Yeah. And uh, he's the one who implemented a lot of, a lot of the, uh, 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 what happened in the purges and everything else. Well, he implemented all that. Um, but um, those are the extremes mm -hmm. of, of of uh, suffering and the extremes of what human beings can do to other human beings. Um, most of us are not going to see that. Um, uh, most of us will probably not directly see a lot of suffering from mm -hmm. people because uh, many people would just won't express anything. Mm -hmm. you know, they they won't tell even their closest friends or family um, their feelings and so on. God, yeah, um, it doesn't fit into our. It's it's weird. It's like it's it's suffering is like uh, it's. It is shameful, like you said. If people are are ashamed of their suffering, or they feel burdensome, and it's interesting if you if you read like. Uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl about his experience in the Holocaust, or I mean, I'm still plugging through the Gulag Archipel uh, Archipelago as, as much of it as I can take at a time. Um, it's real cheerful stuff, but, but within those uh, is 
purifying suffering, right? It is those guys or people, those humans went through all of that stuff. And, and I think that, um, well, like I'm watching uh, my nephew here is 18 and like a lot of young, especially young men, uh, he's had an easy life and, and it's not, it's not helping him. He's aimless. He's struggling. He's acting out because we've taught everybody to avoid suffering, to be ashamed of suffering and struggle. And in a way, I'm try- I don't know. Like, it's like, that's almost anti-Christian, right? Like Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. And I think that yes. our, our extreme aversion to any discomfort in our society is really harming people. Mm-hmm. Uh, And it's one of the things that was attractive to me when I started looking into orthodoxy is that like there is a framework for directed spiritual struggle. Um, Yeah. And and this is where suffering can come in partially in the definition. mm -hmm. So obviously you would suffer for the other. Yeah. Obviously, you know, in, in the best sense, the good person would do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Suffering for our our own spiritual sake, well, that could mean debilitating um, wounds or, 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 or medical conditions for 50 years. Uh, You know, it can be all, could be all kinds of stuff, but there are ways of living through something. And then there are other ways of living through something, you know, and in our drug, drug uh, infused society you know that i'm not saying that people shouldn't take drugs i'm not i'm not like that but people should be aware of of medication Um, because interestingly in that example right it's that seeking to avoid suffering you end up with far worse suffering well, yeah, I mean, you can become addicted to this. You could, I mean, you could mix the wrong drugs. I mean, I, I, I've seen many, many examples of that. Yeah. Uh, of, of, uh, of that happening to people. Um, but what I think for a lot of people, they're only looking at the self-suffering thing. Oh, I suffer so much because I'm going through da, 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 da. Well, yeah, but now what are you going to do? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, this is part of your cross yeah. in the fallen world. Yeah. This is part of your cross is to suffer in, in, in particular ways. Um, what I can do for, for you as a priest and, and, and as a friend is, and I've told people this, and this is one of the, um, uh, the ways that the, how the military works is that I will stand by you. Mm. Yeah, it, I have sat by people that have died. I've sat by people that have gone through extreme suffering, you know, um, uh, during war and, and, and the aftermath of war. And in a sense, I wasn't taking their suffering, but I was share, in, a, in a sense, I was sharing it. Right. Um, I can't take someone's suffering away from you. I'm not. I'm, I'm not the old magician, um, you know, wizard priest guy that you know goes bink, you know, and yeah, and uh, yeah. Um, no, but that's, go ahead. The go Christian ahead. Can, can stand with someone. Um, I right, can stand can... by you. I can hold. You know, I I can try and hold your hand if we can figure out ways of covering yourselves with enough plastic to do that during COVID times. Um, you know, uh, I can be there for your family. I can, you know, these are the things that I can do for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else can I do for you? (laughs) You Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and a lot of us are afraid to ask these questions. Yeah. Cause a lot of times it's like, you think of, uh, St. John and, the Theotokos at the foot of the cross. And a lot of the times it's like, well, there's nothing you can do, but to be there through the suffering of the other. 
And I, you know, I've been, my mom uh, passed away. Uh, oh, wow. Tomorrow will be eight years ago. Um, and oh, memory. Uh, thank you. Um, and uh my my good friend clark wilson back in california i used to he was an elderly man but i i was with him through his passing away as well um and i think that i guess too the way that we look at suffering in the world by like you said uh sanitizing it or making it antiseptic or hiding it away we deprive everyone involved of it's not a it's not it is good it is a good experience it is a passage right it is it can it can be a good experience right and not like like in in like the good is not the adequate word uh no it can be the right experience there yeah maybe that's a better word for it it's it's deep and rich and um it's terrible it's difficult but it it's like the it's it's like you're you're passing through the eye of the needle of this like really difficult thing with someone else even as they go through the ultimate passage of of existence that we have you know and and like because we're so adverse to any kind of of suffering um we're denied that and and that's the the person going through the suffering is also yeah um and you read those like i said I, i'm reading these the frankel or solzhenitsyn or whatever and it's like no like we need to you know well obviously we're not in death camps but it's like if we need to be with one another as we suffer because it brings us closer to god somehow well yeah it does because we're we're doing something with the other yeah this is what this is what the second commandment is all about yeah you know because we think we're all supposed to go and you know and kiss our neighbor and everything else outside of covid and, and so on and so forth that's uh, you know uh no mm -hmm. this is through suffering this is through good times this is through bad times this is doing the right thing this is doing even suffering doing the wrong thing Mm -hmm. um you know um we're supposed to be doing this with our with our neighbors and and some of these things are really hard i mean i i personally experienced that when my when my mother died um i raced down to the hospital where she was and um nine hours away and um my stepfather and I, uh stayed stayed with her at the hospital i went to a hotel a couple miles away and then we came back and we were with her all day made it back to their house. This is the uh, Western Virginia mountains. And then at 6.30 at night, they called and said that she had died. Mm. And I, that was hard, but it was harder telling my stepfather. Mm -hmm. That was the hard part. Mm. That was the hard part. Um, and it's, it's strange, you know, our, my mom's anniversary was last week. Mm. So. In my um, eternal. We just don't talk about this and we need to talk about it. We do. And then we need to talk about it because people need to be actively doing things. <laughs> we have to actively work on our suffering. Um, we have to act actively work on another suffering. And if they don't want you to work with them, then you have to be actively ready to do it. Mm -hmm. You just can't say, well, oh, fine. I'm not talking to you anymore. You know, um, as easy as that is, you know, um, it Seemingly. has to be something active. Yeah. Yeah. It has, it has to be an active part of our spiritual life. And I think that's what, that's what the, the fallen world and our current culture is taking away. Mm -hmm. it's him it's hamstrung us into uh, actively um uh suffering ourselves and then and, and actively helping the other um hmm. because um you know we've got agencies to do this we've got this to do this we've got that to do this well that actually much of that isn't true anymore right <laughs> you know, number right. one 
you know, and number two, that's our job. Right. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. much like a drug. It's a mechanistic uh, solution to something that might not be a mechanical problem. Yeah. 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 You can't go in and say, Oh, I'm going to take my, my spiritual screwdriver and fix that particular little problem, that mm -hmm. little suffering problem there, this little, whatever sin problem, problem there or guilt problem. You know, it's like, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Human beings can't be fixed. We're, we're not machines. Stop um, recording except in the, right there. <laughs> ex, except in the physical sense. All right. right. And that's different. But right. in every other sense, we can't be fixed. And it even in that, out. even in that regard, it's sometimes, sometimes we can be fixed. And even then we're different, right? It's like, well, yeah, break, I mean, I, I've lived break your arm and I, yeah. I, I, I ruptured a disc in my back in, in 1977 and had a back operation on my 20th birthday. Yeah. And I live, I live with that every day in my life. Do I feel good right now? I feel really good right now. Mm -hmm. uh, my back is in one of the best shapes it's been in, in, in 10, 10 years. Thank God. Um, but I've lived with, you know, that particular um, ailment for, for a long time. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at our time. Can we go over again? They're used to it, Father Mark. They're like, this... oh, they're like, oh, we're at about minute 24. Oh, they've got another 15 minutes left. Um, yeah, we got, we got at least 20 more minutes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. It's a lot to chew on, right? Maybe maybe we'll go into that more next week or not. We'll we'll talk about it uh, offline and see where we're going to go from there. But oh, I do next think... next Thursday is Thanksgiving. Well, we so will we'll have to think about. Yeah, All right. I mean, we'll at least warn you that we're not going to we'll... be online next week. We'll see in two. Yeah, we'll minutes. we'll be in touch with you all. Yeah. yeah, we need to be in touch with each other, but we'll be in touch with you all. Too. Yeah. And meantime, Father Mark and I will cook up some more hopefully interesting stuff to talk about. We'll wish you guys happy Thanksgiving a little bit early. Um, some of you will and, see it. Church. And happy feast of the presentation of Our Lady into the temple for those of us on the new on the new calendar yep. on Saturday. Anything else to tell the folks before we sign off, Father Mark? I don't think so. God bless you all and be safe out there in the world. All right. Thank you. It was good to talk to you. It was good to see you guys. Well, not see you, but you know what I mean. Anyways, I got to get this. We know what you mean. Catechumens depart. I don't see catechumens depart. All right. See, there it was. I'm going to have to get better at this. <laughs> well, see, see you guys. You need to back up. All right. You need Can to I back have? up and go like you used to, remember? You used to like oh, kneel sorry. down like Superman. And catechumens whew. depart. Yeah, but more, more of an more of an arc. Yeah. <laughs> Our outro has been five minutes long. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>